of magistrates. Let's speak with Nick Freeman, motoring lawyer, um, known throughout the press as Mr. Loopholes. You get fed up with that, Nick. Good morning. No, not at all. Um, okay. I, I was called by the media and I actually trademarked it. So okay, well, there I've you embraced go. So it. So you've embraced the, the loopholeness of, uh, of your legal existence, which is great. Um, now, of course, what's interesting about this is that you exploit legal loopholes, which is a legitimate um, position legally to take, of course. Uh, so why are you I, calling... I actually apply the law. OK, so uh, you, you specifically apply the law, no which exploitation. I suppose some people see as a loophole. OK, fair dues. That's all I do. OK. Why are you then calling for a redraft? What needs to happen that's not uh, happening? Uh, well, uh, I, I've looked at the consultation paper, uh, and in my opinion, um, what, what's happened is that they're actually going to cause more people to be driving with 12 points or more rather than less. They've, act, they've actually lo loosened the noose and made it easy for people to argue exceptional hardship. And the reason I say that is, first of all, there's a, a whole new ground which is called the Equal Treatment Bench Book. And what the courts are now specifically directed, first and foremost, to consider is, is such things as disabilities, gender, religion. So, for example, if you are a particular religion or you live in an area where there is... Um, um, a, a lot of violence, um, or, or you, you have, you're transgender, or something like that. You can, you're specifically the court specifically directed now to consider that first. Now, while they can always take it into account, that they're, they're directed, and the, these um, these sentencing guidelines actually have statutory force. So there's, right. there's no discretion here. So hang on, there's, you're, there's, so you're there's saying a whole, there's a whole new gambit here. So we, somebody we somebody said, I, I, I believe that I need to drive because of my personal safety, because of a potential hate absolutely. crime. Is that what you absolutely. were? That, uh, yes, absolutely. Okay. You'd obviously, you'd produce evidence of that, and that the magistrates, who, who aren't at all gullible, would consider it to reflect upon it, and they decide. Can, can I just just wind it back and just tell you that when when this law was enacted, it's we're talking about 1988 legislation, and, and what Parliament intended was that basically you get to 12 points, you're off the road for a minimum period of six months. That is the law, and what they intended, and in the spirit of this legislation was to say, look, we're going to give you one more chance when the consequences of that disqualification amount to exceptional hardship. Not hardship, not inconvenience, exceptional yeah. hardship. It was meant to be one more chance. So if you have a, a salesman, for example, traveling 50,000 miles a year, uh, and obviously the likelihood is, particularly with all the cameras, he's going to get caught, yeah. might be doing 36, 37 in the 30s, whatever. And he's going to lose his job, he's going to lose his income, he's not going to be able to provide food, etc., etc., not pay the mortgage. The court, under those circumstances... Um, would consider this exceptional hardship. That okay. is what was supposed to happen. And what's happened is the legislation was drafted very clumsily. And so we now, ha now have the situation which everyone regards as absolutely ludicrous and an insult to, to, to justice and an insult to all of us, that you have somebody driving around with 60 points. There are, in fact, um, 30 people, I think, driving around with more than 30 points and about 250 people um, driving around with more than 20 points. That, that's seems and incredible. Interesting, and interestingly enough, 18,000 driving with more than 12 points. But wow. th th there's good reason for that. But but if we just deal with the, the sort of the, the ridiculous end of the scale, what happens is people say they get they get to 11 points and they haven't argued exceptional hardship. What they then do is commit a, a plethora of offences in different areas and get all these offences dealt with on one occasion, so that these offences, for example, in this particular case, have, have amounted to probably about um, 50 points. They've all been dealt with on one occasion, and someone's persuaded the magistrates that actually they have not argued exceptional hardship before. Right. If you now disqualify me, there'll be exceptional hardship. I see, on that now, point. All, all exceptional hardship means is the court then have a discretion. And what, in my view, what magistrates should do is say, OK, we think there is exceptional hardship, okay. but because, because of the, the way you stuck two fingers up at the system, we will exercise our discretion and disqualify you for whatever period they feel appropriate. So, and it, in my view, it will be a longer period than the six months in those circumstances. And, Nick, and that, that would adjust, ad, ad, address the problem, which, which clearly does need to be addressed. Nick, thank you. Always good to get your expert view on this. Nick Freeman, motoring lawyer, Mr Loophole, with us here on BBC Radio Canada.